Well, family, we are excited today, this morning. Me and uh, Pastor D, we're excited because we have a special person that's going to bring the word this morning. This person was very instrumental in teaching us when we were in our 20s and still says things to us that we still need. Praise God. And I want you to receive the wisdom that God has given him, the journey that he's been on, because I believe that he has a word that will change some of your thinking and allow you to understand the meaning of being grounded. Amen? Come on, let's welcome. My wife said, who is he to you? He is my, my, my father in love. <laughs> and uh, I, I call him dad because he's the only dad I have. And this after, and and he's been a he's been a father since I've been 21 years old. Amen. So let's welcome Minister Paul Banks. Amen. Come on. and the grace of God to each of you. Every story has a beginning, but I'm getting a problem trying to start, and I know the story, but it's hard to start. Side word, word just on the side. Tithers. I've been tithing since I was 18. I'm not going to let you guess how old I am. I'm going to tell you how old I am. I'm 86. 86 years old. I'm still tithing. It used to be everywhere I went, I was the youngest. I was the youngest guy around. Man, we go bowling, I was the youngest. Now, everywhere we go, I'm the oldest. But it's a good thing. Oh, it's a great thing. Shortcut, a real shortcut. I hate the shortcut. The older ones was hoping to understand. Betty understands. I'm ready to go home, folks. Home. Home. Home is where Jesus went. When Jesus left, he went out on Bethany and he went home. Not that I deserve anything at home. He says, the prodigal son, come on home. Wash his feet, put a robe on him, put a ring on his finger, come on home. I have a larger audience than what I imagine with this modern day world I live in. People watching me. <laughs> I don't know all the different names of finangles that they have to zero in on you. You don't even know you're being zeroed in until they tell you about it. I shared something with the, your pastor sometime. I shared a lot of things with him. Most of them I don't remember. He does. <laughs> I said, Ron, when you start to preach, son, let me give you a thought to think on. Either you're a helicopter that's got a journey to go and you take off, or you're on the runway and you're a plane loading and you're ready to go down the runway. Which one are you going to take, son? Because they ain't going to listen to you too long. Get on the helicopter and go home. So he told me, Dad Banks, it's your turn. And which one are you going to take, the helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, son. Uh, I'm going to use them both, I think. <laughs> There's a man in the Bible called Job. Most of you have heard or know of Job. Richest man in the land where he lived, Job. Oh, Job was rich. Job ain't got nothing on me. Job had, yes, he had uh, seven sons and three daughters. Well, I got five daughters and three sons. Job ain't got nothing on me. 
Now let me tell you what I got on Job. Job, the Lord said, I'm going to try my servant and I'm going to show you who he loved, me or what I gave him. Satan said, let me have him. And so he had him. <laughs> and he took everything. And Job was scratching himself with pot sheds, with the scores, the sores they made on him. They have said in modern day language that it's some form of cancer that Job had. And he was scratching himself. He looked terrible. And his wife told him one day, you terrible looking man, you look at you, look at you. All our children are gone. All our harvest is gone. Everything we ever owned is gone. Ain't nothing left but you and me. Why don't you curse God and die? You think Job got stuff on me? My wife said, Paul, you working hard, honey? I said, yes, I am, dear. Yeah, I worked 44 years in the steel plant. She said, bless the Lord and live. <laughs> what a wife. I ain't even started on the message. Boy, I can't get the helicopter going. <laughs> mm. You know what? The Bible said my cup runneth over. You know the only time a cup runs over? When it's full. My cup stays full. Lord God Almighty, I'm full. I stay full. I ain't complaining. I'm just telling you what it's like. Yeah, you think you're crazy, don't you? Paul and Silas at midnight preaching in the jailhouse. Thought they was crazy, but the doors open and they said, come on out, let's go home so you can get baptized at the midnight hour. <laughs> my wife and I 60 years of learning each other <laughs> my daughters are like a beautiful flower garden my sons are like spiritual sons like mighty warriors of God Got a flower garden, and I got warriors standing around the flower garden. I just put you on the spot, boys. Now you got to live up to it, because they're going to be watching you, because you're coming down here to Arizona to visit. Is this? The, yes, that's a mighty warrior. David. Yes, Peter. I named them. James. You see them names coming out? Fill the name. You who think me? My dad or somebody named me? Paul. I got to be a Paul in the Bible. That's why I ain't got no sense because they thought Paul was crazy. He must be beside himself. I wish I could share some other things with you. I really do. Because they answered, God answered some prayers. Then I said, I'll never fly again. I was down here in Arizona for the graduation dinner graduation exercise, Bible graduation. I said, I'll never fly again because I had a bad, 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 bad experience landing in Cleveland. I went to Africa, no problem. I went down south, no problem. I came here to Arizona, no problem. Where did the problem come from, Paul? When I went back home to Cleveland and that big plane tried to land and he did land. Wow. And I thought blood was all over the seat. I held my head because I thought every blood vessel in my head had burst. But it hadn't. It was the atmospheric pressure, I suppose, in Cleveland. The atmospheric pressure that caused my vessels in my head to want to burst. And I knew they had burst. And I was pushing back on the seat. And everybody got off the plane to me. And I said, that's the last time, Lord, I'll fly again. I'll never fly again. It's all right if I leave Cleveland, but coming home. And I was here. When I said, okay, Lord, they called me to come to Arizona last year, a year before that, for the graduation. Okay, Lord, what am I going to do? Tell the Lord, no, I can't go. I won't go because I'm in a, in a, in a situation of flying. One more time, Lord, I'm going to go to Arizona. And I catch the bus. If I have to take me three days to get home, I don't care. <laughs> but somehow or another, I said to the Lord that I'm going to put my trust. I will trust in the Lord. Put my trust in you all the way. And I'm going to see what happens. And I did. I said, okay, Danita, I'm coming. You all didn't know what I 
with faith in coming back, not going down, coming back. I got here, okay, plane landed. I didn't feel a thing like nobody else felt it. I said, okay, Lord, here we go. My last flight, if I never fly again, here we go. That big plane landed. Wasn't a helicopter, boy. I wish it was, but it was a <laughs> big plane. And he landed, and he landed, and he come down, and he came down, and he came down. All I heard was the wheels hitting the ground, rolling. I never felt a pain in my head again. Never. Why do you think I'm down here now? I never felt another pain. I used to have headache, migraine headache. They stayed with me for years and years and years, and I prayed to God that he'd take them away. I got a daughter. I said, here, girl, you got a headache here. Take them. I don't need them no more. Never another headache in over 40 years ago. I never had and never ached again. <laughs> so why am I here? Because I was asked to come down. <laughs> and I had a word for you. I got to keep my word to the pastor. I promised him a half an hour. I'm going to take 29 minutes and a half. I want to speak to you about a word from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, and verses 1 and 2, and from Ezekiel 37, 1 and 3. Isaiah chapter 53, 1 and 2, he says, write this down, Isaiah, that I'm going to root out of dry ground. I'm going to root out of dry ground and a valley full of dry bones, dry. This is the biggest root I had my daughter find. She said, Dad, I can't find one no bigger. <laughs> so make sure that you all can see the root that symbolize I'm a root out of dry ground. What do you expect <laughs> out of a root that comes out of dry ground? Well, to begin this story, at his birth, the birth of Christ, that's getting ready to come around the corner for us, he came into this world as a root out of dry ground. He came into the world as a root out of dry ground. Isaiah, when he wrote it some seven, eight, ten thousand years ago, he wrote it before he even, all them thousand years, this man wrote it down. He said, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming like a root out of dry ground. How do you know? Ask them shepherds, ask the innkeepers. There was no room for him in the inn. Go out there and sleep in the barn. Mr. Root out of dry ground. Go sleep in the barn with the cattle. We have no room for you. You know who I am? Yeah. I don't care if you're a root out of dry ground. You look like one anyway. Look, look how poor you look. You want to come into my manger? Go out and find you a place to live. No comfort in the manger. At his birth, there was no convenience for him or his mother. Mary, you didn't expect this, did you, when the angels told you you're going to conceive and bring forth a child? Wow! You go, whoo! I still, whoo, Lord help me. Folks, if I don't finish it, don't, don't, don't blame Ron. Blame me. I'm quite a bit older than the last time I was here. I ain't got to go back on no plane this time, but I can walk home. You ever try walking to Cleveland, Ohio? <laughs> well, the root out of dry ground took our grief, and he carried our sorrow. You know what, folks? At funerals, you don't have to sorrow as those who have no hope. Why? Because he took your sorrow from you. What are you sorrowing for? When I leave, what are you sorry? Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice where he's going. He's going to heaven, and the disciples stood on the mountain looking at him, going up, rejoicing. He says, Woo! Hallelujah. He's talking about shouting, great God Almighty, I'll give you something to shout about. I'm a root out of dry ground. Now watch me do what I came into the world to do. Wow. Mm. His wounds covered our transgression. The wounds of Jesus are so important to us that a disciple of Jesus said, these are his words, unless I see in his hands 
the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, Jesus took care of Thomas' problem. He had no problem. Thomas, come here. Lord, I'm glad that wasn't me. Put your hand in my side and feel the hole in my side. Put your hand here. Put your hand and feel the nail prints in my hand. Put your hand here. Woo, Lord, I'm glad. He took care of Thomas' problem and mine also. To all other believers, Jesus said, Blessed are these who have not seen and yet believe. You know who causes us to believe? The word of God. You didn't write this. I didn't write this. It's just 20, 50 times older than you. You know who causes us to believe the word of God? So far as I'm concerned and learned and understand, it is the Holy Spirit of God. He brings the conviction upon your mind that this is the truth that took place. You wasn't there when Isaiah wrote this. You wasn't there when Christ died on the cross. You wasn't there. You didn't see him. You didn't feel what Thomas said. And yet Jesus said, Woo! Yet Jesus said, Blessed are those who believe who have not touched my hand or put a hand in my side and filled the hole that the Roman soldiers took a spear in me. Blessed are those who believe. Thank God Almighty, that's something to shout about. Woo! Hallelujah, 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 Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm ready to get in the plane now. I'm through with the helicopter. I'm in the air now, boy. Woo! Woo! Great God Almighty. Wow. I'm a root. Out of dry ground. What do you expect to get out of a root planted in dry ground? Wow. To Thomas, and he says to us, Yet I believe you can feel the scars, but the wound is healed. <clears throat> you can feel the scars, but the wound is healed. Before Jesus was hung from the cross, he was beaten so unmerciful from a Roman whip that he needed someone to carry his cross for him. He needed somebody to carry his cross for him because he was beaten. I understand from a book that the Roman whip had like 10 to 12 lashes on it. And they tied pieces of metal on each one of those and they beat you and they beat you until your intro began to show, and the blood was in. So he writes in Isaiah that when we see him, there's no beauty about him that we would desire him. Wow. He's the bleeding servant of God. He's a, he's a suffering servant of Jehovah. I am a root out of dry ground. Mmm. God says, you, there, when you see him, there is no beauty that you should desire him. What can, you, what can you expect from your child who grows up in a dried up, crime-ridden neighborhood where there is no fear of God? Well, God the Father says, my son shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. I had a one of my first experiences walking with the Lord. I was working night shift and I was trying to sleep at night. I was trying to sleep during the day. Summertime, kids were out the back. We had bought a swing set for our children to, to swing in. They had invited the neighborhood, of course. Well, I'm trying to sleep, so I got to go back to work tonight. And they woke me up with the noise. I jumped out of bed, went outside intending to give them a piece of my mind. Wasn't about no dry road either. <laughs> about me. Y'all children, you working, I got to work. Y'all don't know what it is. Y'all be sleeping tonight and I'll be working. Go somewhere else and play. That's what I intended to tell them. The dry road said, no, you don't. 
I said, okay, Lord, what do I do? I did. I went out there. I said, hey, kids, come here. They came over. <laughs> I said, look up. And they looked up. I said, what did you see? Uh, uh, they're too scared to see it, Miss Hart. They're too scared. Uh, uh, I said, the sun. Yes, sir. I said, you want to know who put it up there? Yes, sir. They better say yes. <laughs> I said, okay. Look down. And they looked down with their little heads trembling and shaking. I said, you see that grass on the ground? Y'all ain't got that, though. You see that grass on the ground? <laughs> they said, yes, sir. I said, you want to know who put it there? Yes, sir. Go home and ask your mama if you can come to Bible study. And I got started teaching, and I ain't stopped because God fixed me good. Every neighborhood I moved to, you know what I started? A Bible study at home. I moved to another neighborhood, a Bible study at home. If your neighborhood seems dried and, 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 and soaked up with crime risen and hate, and there's no fear of God, start a Bible study someplace in your home. In your home. Didn't Silas and Peter start one in jail? Didn't the jail open the doors at nighttime? Didn't the centurions hear them preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? You ain't going to get but one chance. And when they look at my tombstone, well, he ain't dried up now. He go home to be with the Lord in heaven. I concluded that the tender plant with the root is God's son. And that here it comes, the dry ground. Here it comes, is Israel. Israel, the place where God chose to put his name in Jerusalem. Israel is the dry ground. Israel was very unproductive as a God-fearing nation. What did you produce? So in the Bible, in the book, in the book of uh, John, I believe, he talks about <coughs> he talks about the fig tree that Jesus cursed was unproductive. The leaf indicated what you were supposed to be producing. Went to the fig tree because he was hungry and there wasn't no figs on the tree. He said, curse you because you ain't producing what, you, what I made you to do. And so the next day, his disciples went by and they saw the fig tree all dried up and twisted. They said, master, look at the fig tree. Yeah, I know it. It's supposed to happen. Produce who you claim to be. Produce other little Christians like yourself. Well, in chapter 37 of Ezekiel, he says, speak of a valley full of dry bones. And Ezekiel asks, can these dry bones live? God says to Ezekiel, I will join these bones together and breathe life into them, and they will live. So what does your family life look like? What does life on your job look like? What does your life look like to God? God says, I am the root out of the dry ground. God says, I am life to a valley full of dry bones. Can these bones live? Lord, you know it. You're right, I know. Watch and see. And he heard the clinking and the clinking and the bones coming together. And when they got through joining together, he said, whoa, look at that. He said, yeah, but I ain't finished. Oh, winds from the four sides of the world, blow on them come on, and make them live. Blow on your neighborhood. Blow on your job. Make them live. Call on God to help you see. See the truth that God has sent you in that job to be. I went on the job. I went on the job. In my neighborhood, when I prayed for those kids, they said, Mr. Bates, we know how to pray. I said, we say our prayers every night before we go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord myself. Stop. I said, no, you ain't going to pray that one. Not here. You're going to learn to pray to God because I might need you one day, girl. A little eight-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old. And so they learn. My son cuts hair. And see, he got sick one time, definitely sick. And this is something like 20, 25 years. I'm just guessing at the age. 
and he was sick in the hospital, and there was a young lady standing on the other side of his bed praying for him. So when she left, I said, David, who is that young lady? She said, that's the lady I, I could have heard, Dad. I said, she looks like a, somebody I know. I said, what's her name? And he gave me a name. I said, no, that's not her name. Her name is Leah. He said, it might be Leah. So I, she changed her name. Come back next week. She was standing on the other side of the bed praying for my son. I said, young lady, after we finished praying, I said, did you used to live on 116th Street in, in Kennedy? She said, yes, I did. I said, your name Leah? She said, yes. I said, I taught you to pray, girl. I taught you in the neighborhood. I'm your teacher. I am your teacher. I taught you to pray. We shouted all over that hospital. Go to the hospital to visit somebody that needs visiting. I went to the VA hospital because I'm a VA. And I prayed for a friend of mine because he asked his, to, asked his brother baby to come to the hospital and pray for me. I went to the hospital and prayed for him. And I was ready to leave. I said, hey, buddy, you feeling better? I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you, brother baby. And before I could leave, one man said, mister, would you come down here, please? I went down there to see what he was talking about. He said, would you pray for me? Because he heard my prayer over my friend. Go to the hospital and pray for somebody. Go to the nursing homes and pray for somebody. They don't get happy like you do here. Woo! I was in the nursing home. The lady was so happy. She thought I was Catholic. I guess she started kissing the back of my head. I said, no, 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 no. I'm almost through with us. I'm almost finished. God says, I am the root out of the dry ground. God says, I am life to a valley full of dry bones. God says, I'm a root of Jesse and shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. You know who a Gentile is? If you ain't a Jew, you're a Gentile. Just that simple. You ain't got to figure it out. <laughs> God says, I am the Lion of Judah, the root of David. I am the root and offspring of David the bright and the morning star. Shine on King Jesus. Shine on King Jesus. Shine on King Jesus in my life. Take away the darkness. Shine on my life so that others may see the leaf and know what I represent like, like the fig tree. I curse the fig tree because you didn't produce what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be representing me and you ain't representing nobody. Shine, Gene. Shine on me. Let the breath of the Lord shine on me. I changed one word in this song. On a hill, far away, stood an old wooden cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, I love that old cross, for the dearest and best, for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old wooden cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old wooden cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Might be a soul here today who's never accepted Christ into his or her life. This is your time accept Christ, to let it be known, I want Christ in my life. Is there a soul here? If it is, come up front and tell the Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Savior. That root out of dry ground, in my life it was dry. Now, Lord, there is a root growing in my life. And his name is Jesus. He's your son. I know you know him like you know him. He made me know you. Is there a soul here today who has never accepted Christ into his or her life? And you need Christ. You need Christ. You need Christ. Today is the day that you can accept him publicly and openly. He died on the cross. That was publicly. They saw him die. If you are who you say, come down. He was seen by those who hung him up there for you and for me. He's a root out of dry ground. He'll take your life that replaced Israel. We are the dry ground. We are the dry ground. Ain't dry no more when I come into your life. See if you don't produce what I called you to produce. 
See if you don't make disciples of all nations and go where I send you to go. See if you don't baptize in my name by the Lord Jesus Christ. See if the power of the God don't radiate himself in your life. See if people don't get happy now that they didn't get happy before. See if they don't rejoice and be glad in it. Because right around the corner, you're talking about celebrating Christmas. You better celebrate the root of Jesse, the bright and the morning star that rose from the dead. It is just waiting on December 25th to celebrate. I celebrate all year long. In August, I'll celebrate the birth of Christ. I celebrate the birth of Christ in July. I don't wait on a date. The moving of the Holy Spirit in my life got me going like a helicopter and a flying jet. It don't make no difference. It don't make no difference. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, folks. Oh. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible reminds us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Sometimes we have been so accustomed of how people deliver their style. But you know what? God can care less about a style. He can care less about a hoop. He can care less about a shout. He cares what comes from the heart. And my, my dad, he speaks from his heart. When you see him up here preaching, that's from his heart. There's a lot of people that can preach and, and preach you to a fit. But I guarantee you, if you put them before God and a man like this man, they might hear you preach to yourself. And it was for your gratification. So I've learned so much from this man because he speaks from his heart, from the passions of his heart. And I've learned so much from him because when he speaks, it's not to impress anybody. It's to let them know how much he loves Jesus. How much he loves Jesus. There's something in the Bible that reminds me of him. The word says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20, listen to advice and accept instructions that you may gain wisdom in the future. Men like my father-in-law on love and men who have been on this journey like he has it's our responsibility to listen. Listen. I learn now as I've gotten older that ignorance and immaturity don't want to listen because they think they know or they think you don't know as if you've never been through nothing. It might be a different way, it might be a different vibe, but they you've been through the same thing they're going through. They have they may have more technology, but you've been through it too. And today I want to close with this because I feel led by the Holy Spirit to say this out loud because my father lets out something about root. The growth is rooted in the outward growth growth is in the root and it produces outwardly. And your root only can produce fruit. If it doesn't produce fruit, that means the root is not rooted right in the soil. Amen? So my heart is today, for those that are here and those that are watching by live stream, God did not bring us in the world to be average. He's an agriculturalist. And he's planted us and called us to be rooted in his word. That the roots that we're called to be in this world, because we're called to be fruitful, will only happen when you understand that life 
is in his word. It's also in the blood of Jesus. But God said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds what? Out of the mouth of God. Because that root, that which we are, will produce the fruit that we've declared. And God wants you to produce. Someone say produce. This is a season of reevaluating where you are in life, what you're called to do in life. This is a season to not allow the circumstances that you've been in because a lot of us have come from drowned, dry places. We've been, we've been in dry places. And some of you need to know that God is speaking life into you even now. As my, as my father in love spoke, he's speaking life to you that you don't have to be dry, that you don't have to be unrooted. A rooted up, you can be what God's called you to be if you just say yes. Yes to his will. Yes to his word. Amen? So whatever you're going through today, don't let what you're going through hinder what was said in this atmosphere. Today is a day of reevaluating where you are. Today is the day to not let the problems, the circumstances, the dry places that you've been around to dictate your future. And if you're here today, and those that are watching my live stream, if you're here today, don't let anything determine your outcome. Because God has already prepared and declared your outcome to be so. So today I declare... Your language will change when you're rooted. I declare that your language will begin to speak outwardly because God says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And today God wants to hear the mouths of those who really want to see a change in their life. He wants them to make a choice, a decision that can revolutionize your life. If you're here today, I want you to say yes to Jesus. That's what you need. Jesus told his disciples that my father is the husband man, and I'm the vine, and you're the branches. Anything that doesn't produce, he prunes. God is saying to you, that you're called to produce. Despite wherever you come from, your family, your background, it doesn't matter. When you get rooted in God and let Jesus be the vine, you'll begin to see fruit come out of your life, out of your mouth, out of your surroundings. Change family differences. It's amazing. So if you're here today, I want you to make that confession. I want you to believe that this is my day of turnaround. This is my day to believe that I haven't seen my best yet. Last time, I want to thank you in advance. There's great things coming your way. God is up to something. And let me just say this to you. God was not surprised of what 2020 gave us. He knew already. So nothing surprises God. Even now, God knows who's here today and who needs to say yes to him. Someone shouldn't have to shout to get you stirred up to say yes. There should be a yes in your heart because you're tired of seeing what you've been seeing in your life. So live stream, I declare you say yes today. Whoever you are, whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going through, keep going through it because there's something on the other side that's better than what you're seeing now. Keep walking. If that's you today, I want you to make this declaration. I feel there's someone watching on live stream that's tired, that's, that's weary and well-doing. But God says if you keep trusting, if you keep digging, if you keep staying rooted in me, you'll begin to see the fruits that I've called you to produce. Repeat after me. Father, today I'm confessing that I've been around dry places and I don't feel productive in my life but today I am making a declaration and I'm proclaiming 
by the word of God that he who began a good work in me shall perform it until the days of Jesus Christ. I'm declaring today for the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to the glory that shall be revealed in me. Jesus, I say yes to your will. I say yes to your ways. Today, I'm pushing and pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Jesus. Today is my day of new beginnings. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that, give God a...